world-class physicians and scientists from across the country come together to help solve the problems of Chiari malformation, syringomyelia, and related disorders. The CSF Foundation has put together a medical board um, of some of what I consider, my opinion, the best people in the field. And so it's sort of an intellectual think tank. I, I might say that I have seen hundreds of patients with um, Chiari and related disorders. And the thing that really is so striking to me is how long people have searched before they found an answer. I met Lori Watson. Lori is part of the CSF board, and Lori shared the story about her son and just going back and forth to all the doctors who really had no idea, no clue, was causing the symptoms in her son. Listening to Lori's story as a parent, it was heartbreaking. So, you know, you can look at the internet, look at their real credentials, you know, see where they went to school and, and what they've accomplished academically and training-wise. What I personally think is important is that the uh, patient uh, looks at the track record, if they can, of the neurosurgeon and, the, and their ability to communicate with the neurosurgeon. Does the neurosurgeon seem like he or she is, uh, is speaking to them and dealing with them from the heart? They look at the patient as a human being with family, with work situation, with all the psychosocial issues, as well as the, all the systems of their body. But you want to look for a person, a specialist, who does a fair number of these operations or has more than a passing knowledge. Does the neurosurgeon seem like they are making recommendations that they would apply to themselves as the neurosurgeon? patients and their caregivers demanding to know what the issues are so they can be part of the decision-making uh, uh, complex. Um, that they can participate and bring their own values, their own preferences in, in the decision-making part. I think the, the, the questions to ask are, what is the problem? How do you know that this is the problem? What can be done for the problem? And what are the simple, and, and uh, uh, are there any simpler ways of dealing with it other than surgery? and can I treat it conservatively? What are the consequences of treating it conservatively or not operatively? And what are the complications associated with surgery? And you need for the surgeon to help you assess the risks and benefits. And that's what, that's what the, um, the discussion, the counseling is all about. And, and even surgical management of some patients, it's important for us to make clear to them that even if we can stop the progression of syringomyelic cavities, the collapse of some of these cavities can sometimes bring, bring increasing neuropathic pain as a, as a complication just of collapsing these cavities. There's a team that treats patients with Chiari and or syringomyelia. Well, I think it's very important to be able to uh, seek treatment not only from a skilled physician, but to be able to evaluate, does he believe in the team approach, multidisciplinary? And so the practice should look like it has a comprehensive nature to it, not just the neurosurgeon. Do they have mechanisms of dealing with the other problems associated with, uh, with uh, Chiari malformation and syringomyelia? 90% of your care, whether it be in the hospital or often outside the hospital, is provided by a nurse practitioner or physician assistant or some mid-level provider who will be available to you eight hours a day, five days a week, because when dealing with a surgeon, you have to remember they spend a considerable amount of their time in the operating room unavailable for a consultation. I tell every family, even after they see me, please go out and get a second opinion. Any doctor who tells you not to get a second opinion should walk out of his office or her office and never come back again. Second opinion is always something that I think is good. 
I encourage patients to get second opinions. And before you undergo any therapy, whether it's surgical or medical, you want to be confident that what you're doing is the right thing to do. I would, would caution people about second opinions because you should be just as, just as careful in selecting the person who gives the second opinion as the one that gives the first opinion. And uh, so it is, you, you do have to understand that if you get a second opinion, it might be a second opinion. It might be a different opinion from the one that you got the first time, and then you're faced with deciding who you believe. The question of uh, uh, treating patients who come in with a diagnosis of Chiari malformation or syndrome ilia is a very complicated one. When in the setting of a Chiari on the MRI, is it clinically significant? Because there's some patients who have Chiari's who are not symptomatic, and other patients who have Chiari's who are terribly symptomatic. And so making the decision about when surgery is necessary and what surgery is necessary, all of those things are still big questions. Um, and so therefore it's not, it's, it's not clear cut. And I often will tell a patient, we need to draw a line in the sand when your symptoms or your problems get to such, at this point, this is when I think you should have surgery. Do you agree? And we have a dialogue on that. There are uh, findings that we didn't really uh, identify as frequently in the days prior to the availability of MR scanning, but now they are uh, quite common, and I've seen literally several hundred patients with this diagnosis who certainly, in my opinion, don't require surgery. The patient needs to fully understand what would happen if no surgery was done. Are there any alternatives to surgical intervention? And what uh, will happen as a result of complications that might occur in surgery? The issue really is that obesity plays a tremendous role in the pathology and the treatment of uh, patients who have Chiari. So we look at uh, really ways to, uh, uh, to develop phys uh, physical medicine strategies, weight loss, dietary control. If you are, uh, have a body mass index of 35 or 40, and you can get those from, uh, from any of the websites that have it, and you have the signs and symptoms of Chiari, you should really commit to weight loss. Even to the point of involving bariatric uh, surgery programs uh, to control weight, because it's not uncommon for our patients sometimes to be 50, 60 pounds overweight. I always push hard for them to have, a bari have bariatric surgery before they have the uh, Chiari decompression, just because the chance of failure is so high and the risks are so high in that population. I've found that, that it often turns out that after they've lost the weight, they don't need the treatment for the Chiari. What is the probability, if you have a Chiari malformation, that you will pass that to your child? So we know so little about the genetics and sort of how this is um, inherited and what the risks are uh, within families that it's, it's hard to predict at these stages um, who will and who will not. Sometimes we do see that this condition runs in families. So there are a few examples of identical twins who both have Chiari malformation and even identical triplets. You are at a, in an advantageous position because you are alert to the possibility that um, uh, your offspring might have a Chiari malformation, so you're much more likely to have that child uh, undergo uh, diagnostic testing if there are any symptoms that present. I send all my prospective patients and current and former patients to the CSF website. What's beautiful about this site and why this organization is worth supporting is they're very scientific and careful about the information that hits a website. 
The goal is to educate, not intimidate. The goal is to alleviate pain, not to cause more pain. Um, and that's why an organization like Chiari Syringomyelia Foundation is so essential uh, for people with the same challenges to be able to sort things out and be able to focus on who's the best in their area to achieve what their goals are, whether they be medical or surgical or psychological, whatever the, the, the challenges associated with their Chiari or spinal cord cyst. I do have a passion for finding the answers to these disorders because I lived on those neurological floors with the kids who are suffering with this. And my son's walking. So I'm grateful and I'm not gonna stop until we find the answers for everyone. We need funds for research to find the answers for pain and for the cure for these disorders. And without your help, we can't do it.